Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit more about remedial measures and I'm going to discuss some examples of successful remedial measures that I've suggested or recommended to people and again uh, normal Ayurvedic advice normal advice like that you'll hear is good but there's a lot more specific advice you can get when you work with professionals on a really serious level with astrology or Vedic astrology, you know, all this stuff, Ayurveda, um, even Chinese medicine, like the stuff that you read on the internet is not going to be the same as the stuff that you hear from a pr practitioner of 30, 20 or 30 years, you know? Um, so here's some cool examples, I think, of, you know, when I've worked with clients and tried to give them more of a customized approach, a customized remedial measure, rather than just you know, that type of general advice. Like I said in the previous video on remedials, it's good. General advice is still good advice, but it's not as helpful as really acute advice to someone's situation. For example, I am in a Saturn Mahadasha, so they would tell me to, you know, wear black on Saturdays and to feed crows and to feed the homeless. Um, that's, that is good advice. That does help. But that's also just generally good advice, <laughs> you know, um, so anyone who wants to wear black on Saturday, it is a little bit of a better day to wear black for particular occult reasons. Um, so y you might be in a Saturn Dasha that has a lot and Saturn is doing certain things in your chart and it, there might be like more specific, uh, particular detailed ways that you can work with that energy. So in my life, this is my chart. Um, I'm a Pisces rising, and um, I'm ruled by Jupiter, and Jupiter is also my Atmakarika, and um, that there is the sign of Pisces, sign of surrender and devotion, and that that planet Mercury there represents um, <clears throat> Vishnu, which is considered to be an avatar the avatar. So I've been very much into a uh, path of bhakti yoga and surrender to a avatar of Vishnu. Uh, that is one, one sort of remedial measure that's worked really well for me. That wouldn't work for other people, but it's quite obvious in my chart and for various other reasons. Um, one thing that's worked really, really well for me in terms of uh, ways to work with my karma is the use of creative imagination or the use of what people call the law of attraction or what people call um what what the idea of um you know like manifesting your own reality is about and that relates to the moon <clears throat> and i also think it relates a little bit to venus too the whole idea of your inner subjective vibrations and states attract experiences to you the moon is the planet of prosperity um, and I have a, a pretty good, healthy moon in its own sign in Cancer, and it's waxing. You know, it's almost full because the sun is there. So if the moon got to Leo, that would be a full moon, 180 degrees opposite the sun. So it's almost there. So it's waxing, um, and it's in the fifth house, which is the house of, as you may know, it is the house of good past life karma. So I was blessed with um, <clears throat> a, a health, a good mother, um, <clears throat> and and good. Um, emotional intelligence and using emotion and feeling and imagination and meditation and the law of attraction, these various ideas um, were really, really, really helpful for me. If you find that, you ha if you have a strong moon and you wanna know about that, I would highly recommend this little pamphlet uh, by Roy Jean Davis. If you can't, if that's, looks like that's being mirrored or Anyways, it's How to Use Your Creative Imagination by Roy Eugene Davis. You can order this from csa-davis.org. Um, just a short little pamphlet about how to attract uh, better experiences into your life through um, what you contemplate and imagine in your inner states. <clears throat> Another thing that's worked really well for me is, uh, is just plain mantra practice japa or uh repetition of a name of god or a my mantra practice um 
the word mantra, you know, man, manas means mind and tra means like a tool or a way to work with something. And so a mantra is just like a, a, ma- a tool of the mind, a focusing device. So, um, you know, if you've ever wanted to meditate and you tried it and then you, your mind was too restless and you couldn't meditate, okay, that's what 4 billion people on the planet have probably said when they try to meditate. That's the human condition. Don't think there's anything wrong with you. You do a mantra. You learn to focus the mind, to, you know, to be, make the mind one-pointed, um, which strengthens the mind, and then it strengthens anything you actually want to do. It's one of the best things you could do for your life across the board. So mantra practice is a really w- great way to get someone, um, get new generations of new karmas and new momentum going in someone's life. Um, and then what you do the mantra to can vary, but yeah, the fifth house has to do with mantra practice. So I have that good moon there and then the mind. So the moon, the mercury should be good. And then, um, Jupiter should be good. So Jupiter and mercury have a lot to do with mantra practice. So Jupiter, mercury, fifth house, if those things are really healthy and strong, uh, there is a very good chance that someone can benefit from mantra practice like more than average. And then what deity they should do the mantra to is a little bit more specific. Um, Or what energy or what sort of mantra they should do. I can't go into all that right yet. But you can see that, yeah, so I have mercury. It is debilitated. My mercury is debilitated. Um, And it's also combust um, by the sun. So I'm not good at being organized. I'm not good at a lot of the things that are mercurial outside of the Pisces realm. See, like my microphone right here, it's in the shot. A good Mercury person, they wouldn't have done that. They would have seen that ahead of time. Um, so my Mercury, it is exalted in the Navamsha chart. It is, um, <clears throat> it is, it does have Nietzsche Banga, like cancellation of debilitation almost every way. <clears throat> so, and you know, you're, you, you can hear me communicate. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a completely broken Mercury. I'm not saying that. It's great for spirituality. It's great for Jupiterian things. It's great for contemplation and all this Jyotish stuff. But when it comes to just being organized, if you saw my house, um, (laughs) when it comes to uh, a lot of the other little details, all the little mercurial things, replying to emails quick enough, marketing, like all these things just, you know, falls to the wayside. I just don't have the energy or time for it. And I don't want to really. I would rather just be in. Pisces state of, uh, you know, contemplation and free, being free from material concern. So uh, that's why Mercury is debilitated in Pisces. Mercury really does well anywhere, but his he can do the most in Virgo, where he, you know, he can, he's in the earth realm where he can fix and, and do all these things. So he just can't do as much in the Pisces, the dream realm. Um, the one of the only ways that mercury can do really well in pisces is if it's with jupiter or venus in pisces you'll see that a lot with spiritual figures or astrologers or people like that so yeah so i've had great results from a a mantra practice um and i've had great results from creative imagination and then i've had really great results from being initiated into a to Kriya Yoga into a meditation tradition because the fifth house has to do with also initiations and like um, past life good karma. And my Rahu is with Mars, which Mars is a big planet of Kriya Yoga. Mars and Jupiter, um, both of those are very big planets of of yoga traditions and especially Kriya Yoga. Mars is ruling the ninth cusp, you know, um, of spiritual traditions. And that's within in Aries in the second. So that actually is an indication showing like it was really important for me to get initiated into um, a yoga tradition in this life. And so, yeah, Kriya Yoga, doing those pranayam, gosh, if I, if I hadn't done that, I don't know what would be going on in my life right now. I'd probably be a mess. So that's one of the best rem, remedial measures I've ever done um, was just getting initiated into Kriya Yoga, learning to do that. When you do that, if you're someone who knows who has done that, you know how much of your karma immediately just gets dissolved. And when you go into a lot of different yoga spiritual traditions, a lot of people don't realize is if you actually are sincere and you're going on that path, your normal karmas get suspended until you leave that path. They don't come back. Um, If you stop doing that Kriya Yoga and then you just decide whatever, I'm going to do whatever, I'm going to do an astrologer, I'm not that 
those karmas will just fall right back on you that your chart spoke about that everything is revealing. But if you actually really sincerely are 100% focused on a spiritual path with, you know, you've got a master, you've got a guru, whatever, just keep doing all of that. And that is the number one remedial measure there is. And all of your karmas will just become suspended. They'll just be lifted off and they'll be slowly worked out. A lot of them won't need to be worked out if you stay on that path, you see? But if, as soon as one wavers or falls from that path, they all kind of recoil back on a person. Same thing happens when you follow a false guru or a false teacher. All of your sanskaras that you gave to that teacher, and then you're all happy and blissful, once you realize that they're false, they all recoil back on you and you're in a way worse state. So it's not always good to <clears throat> follow a false guru or a big fancy YouTube guru, not naming any names. Um, anyways, next chart. Okay, so, um, yeah, so here's a chart of someone who, you know, they were having a really tough time, they were really stressed out, um, they were having a lot of major issues with their boyfriend, and um, had, they, they had really wronged, their boyfriend had really wronged them, you know, and it put them in a bad place. Rahu in the seventh, you know, we can see issues with love and relationships like that, getting the short end of the stick and things. Um, but Saturn had just moved into her sixth house, I believe it was the beginning of her Saturn return. And, uh, like the session we did wasn't really that great. And I was really bummed. And then later on, I realized like, Oh, okay. You just need to do this certain mantra practice because I realized that, yeah, her fifth house is quite strong. Look, she also has a strong moon in her fifth house and it's full. It's completely full. It's a sign of Jupiter, a sign of mantra. Um, Jupiter and Mercury are conjunct. She, like I had too. She has the, when you have Mercury and Jupiter conjunct, you can do really well for mantras. I meant to say that earlier. Um, Mercury is delighted by Jupiter. So a mantra given by a guru or a teacher of some sort delights that Mercury and makes, makes him able to manifest new things, basically. So Sun's her Atmakarika, um, and it's conjunct those two. So that's also showing it's like a part of her own self. Um, and you know, this was in the 11th house of gain. Um, it just seemed pretty obvious. Yeah. You need to do a certain type of mantra. The mantra was to Saturn and because she was in a Saturn, um, she was in her Saturn return and that the issues described were Saturnian issues. You know what I mean? But it was a strong Saturn. And she had strong mantra karma. So doing a mantra to Saturn worked, worked really, really well. Um, and within the 40 day period of doing the mantras that, you know, I suggested everything that there was, she, you know, she was able to like move and have, find a new job. She didn't have a job and like her whole life kind of like changed itself and rearranged itself. And I forgot to mention this, but I actually had a very, very similar experience. I've talked about this before in videos, but I had um, a like one of the worst times in my life. I had just entered my Saturn Dasha and didn't know it because I was doing sidereal astrology and like didn't know why the hell. Like my chart was supposed to be perfect. I was supposed to be like just steadily doing awesome things. And my life fell apart and it didn't make any sense. And within, you know, like one or two months, my girlfriend had like forced me to like move in with her because I wasn't being serious. And then she uh, cheated on me and broke up with me. And then my car was breaking down. And at the same time, my father, his health, uh, and, I, and I ran his leather shop. So I had to like run his leather shop while he was getting a bypass and his, he had a heart attack. He had all these heart problems. And I had to like take care of him and the shop, all this stuff. It was a nightmare. And actually my, my uh, main meditation teacher, Ryan Kurzak, just didn't know any of this. Y'all know Ryan, he's a good astrologer. He just emailed me. He was like, you really need to do Saturn mantras. You need to start this Saturday at dawn. And I was like, yes, sir. Done. Cause he didn't even know what was going on. And I started doing it. And my life in that 40 day period, my life transformed. Saturn was actually exalted at that time in my eighth house um, and was retrograding. And so it was a very, very deep time. And that was when I learned uh, and got initiated into all this tropical Vedic astrology and learned how to do real Vedic astrology um, and not just the stuff that's like sort of like the normal generic stuff you learn or the religious -y 
stuff or the kind of traditional stuff coming from people who just sort of do astrology as like a religion, but don't really like live it and breathe it and study it and, you know, actually test out the stuff they read in the Sanskrit books. You know, there's a lot of people that are just in India doing astrology just as blind, like armchair astrology, like religiously as Westboro Baptist Church people here in America are, are preaching about the Bible and not really even thinking about what it has to say. You know what I mean? Um, so I was actually having nervous breakdowns about not being able to find the right true astrology path that I believed in that I knew was out there. You know what I mean? And I, and I found, I'd read all of Frawley's work. I read all of Art Defoe's work. I read all of James Braha's stuff. I read all the, all the normal astrology, Vedic astrology stuff out there. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I know that just a lot of people are like me. It just wasn't enough. It just wasn't, it was like, Oh my God, this is all we have. Like how, this is the most, divine this is the highest science and branch of knowledge there is and we're still we still have like the main book is riddled with typos and you know astrology of the seers by david frawley it was like gandhi's chart and hitler's chart were just copied and they didn't even have the data right they copied it like did no one see this this book's been republished for 10 years am i the only one who saw that wow mahatma gandhi just like his data is the same as Hitler's. They copied it. Like no one else has looked this up in a decade and been testing this. That was my experience of astrology. And that was um, right when my Saturn Dasha hit, I was just like uh, really obsessed with the fact that no one knew what they were talking about in astrology, but that there still, there really was something there, you know? So that led the rest of my life of me studying that and finding that and figuring out. And hopefully I did. Um, if it weren't for that Saturn mantra practice, who knows, maybe I never would have found the type of astrology that really sung to me and really resonated. And, and I wouldn't have heard that song. You know what I mean? That's just been singing ever since. Who knows? So I have to be really grateful to Ryan for suggesting that, that mantra and to um, everything for the way it's played out. So this was someone who had an equally um, wonderful experience with a mantra. All right. And then, okay. So this is a interesting one. Remedials not practiced. So here's someone who I've done readings for over for like three or four years and they weren't happy with relationships and they weren't happy with like this person in their life who like kind of wouldn't get out of their life and they felt like they had to take care of them. They're trying to be nice, but they couldn't get them out and blah, blah, blah. All this stuff was going on. And, um, I, so, so I suggested a Durga mantra because it seemed really, really clear that that was going to work for her. And mantra practice did seem to be like a good idea because she had strong fifth house. She had the Jupiter Mercury delight, but she had it with this debilitated sun here and that Jupiter is really, really weak. Um, and Venus is really debil and Venus is debilitated with K2 as well, which is not good um, generally. Um, but it does make one a really sincere, like loving, um, kind of soul, but it cannot be good. For, it can cause relationship problems. Um, so that's, so it made sense that she was having those. Um, so I recommended this mantra and taught it to her person. Um, she did it with me practically. I was like, Hey, do it for 40 days, um, 108 times. That's all the standard stuff I say to everyone. And then like two weeks later, she was just like, ah, I'm having this like crazy situation. What's going on? Can you help me? Or can you tell me what's up? And I was like, hmm, that's weird. Like you should be fine because you're doing the mantra practice. And she was like, no, I, I wasn't told. I didn't know I had to keep doing it. I thought that was just for one day. And I was like, what? No, there's no way I made it seem that way. We spent like an hour doing it, like talking about it, going over all the stipulations. It was definitely not for just that one moment. So whatever, you know, and I was like, you could do it again. You can still try it. Um, and she didn't want to try it. And then she just kept having the same problems and nothing has improved in her life. And so the thing is like, especially if you're in a Saturn Dasha, which she is, things are in, you're having problems, things are not just going to improve on their own or really in the Dasha of a lot of the cruel planets, like even in the Dasha of Rahu or, K2 or sun, these cruel planets, they require work and effort. So if things are not going well for you and you don't make the change or do something new, then nothing's going to change until that entire period runs out, which could be a long time. 
So why didn't she do it? Well, there's this interesting idea that if, you know, Venus and Bra uh, Venus and, and Jupiter are the Brahmins or the astrologers of the Zodiac. So when both of them are really afflicted and asleep, one doesn't, one is basically asleep to the advice of the Brahmins or is basically not listening to advice that they should listen to is not, is not being open or receptive to really good wisdom when they need to hear it basically. So um, Jupiter is in a starved sign and is starved by Mercury and is um, agitated and combusted by a debilitated sun. So that's like a really, that's not a good, a good Jupiter, you know? So it's not, so she could hear the truth. When you have an afflicted Jupiter like that, you can just hear the truth and it just goes in one ear and out the other. And you're like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Cool. And then a week later, you're complaining because you didn't do that great idea that they told you to do. Um, and then with Venus debilitated, one doesn't, um, in the same way, it's, it's the same exact idea, but it's Venus has to do with more with like the worldly wisdom, the relationship advice. So Venus is sleeping there. So she was just kind of asleep to that advice. And then also K2 in the first house always makes one want to like do their own thing. See, K2 in the first house means like, no. I'm in charge. I set my course. I don't even need to go to an astrologer ever, or, you know, usually that's, they're not as inclined to, um, they like to set their own course and stuff, but really Rahu in the seventh is saying, no, listen to what other people have to say. They're telling you exactly what's wrong and you're just not wanting to do it. Um, so that was kind of a, you know, one of the examples of, of not practicing a remedial and years later, nothing has changed. Um, so this is, a, another, a mantra practice. This person, they were having a lot of difficulties, just not getting their life together, not feeling like they were in the flow of prosperity, not feeling just, you know, feeling really stuck in their life. And I saw that again, um, the, well, this, there's no plan in the fifth house, but the fifth house, the word was mercury and it was retrograde pretty strong in the ninth house, you know, and with K2. So there's a sincere, you know, energy around Mercury. And I noticed that Jupiter was very strong too in its own sign in a proud state. So again, you know, mantra. And then uh, Moon is on the ascendant. The, the particular mantra that I gave was a Lakshmi mantra. Um, and so that spoke to opening up this Rahu and Cancer needing to, fo needing to like develop the feminine more. Um, and this is, a, this is a woman, um, and having that exalted moon on the ascendant and Venus was her ruling planet. Um, but the third house is also, um, a house that has to do with, you know, practice, like using your, your hands, getting involved and in doing it. So I, I was like, you really need to, you know, put a lot of emphasis on practicing this don't just think because i told you this like the k to ninth oh i just gave you this perfect mantra it's going to work out but if you do apply a lot of your effort and think about it and contemplate it and imagine it put a lot of your mental energy into it you will notice changes and so she did that and in 40 days she she noticed a lot of changes um she actually i'm sorry i forgot i gave her i've given her two different 40 day practices one to lakshmi and one to durga and the one for durga was very like kind of intense but transformative and it cut a lot of things out of her life that she needed to cut out um and the lakshmi mantra was one that was more like just put her back into like a really nice cozy and pros prosperous state um so that's a good example of that um sorry yeah and then this final example um this is guy, no, no mantras here. This is just a, a remedial where, okay, he was having relationship issues. He was having, he has Rahu in the seventh house, which, so it's common to have relationship issues. Um, and, you know, the seventh Lord is starved by the moon, um, which can indicate that it's really your fault. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. I have this placement too. Sometimes um, it gets me just as much as other people. And, um, you can watch my videos on that to understand that placement. But yeah, so that was going on. And um, the chart was really saying that, well, you really just need an understanding of these things. Like you, if your sharp Mercury and Sun and Mars 
if you just know the rules and know what to do and know what you're not doing right, you'll do a lot better. So I gave him this relationship course that's really good. And he started listening to it and he said it was like magic. Like his life just started transforming. All these things he thought were not his fault. He started working on them, changing them. His his relationship reflected those changes. She started changing. All these amazing, just magic, just amazing, wonderful things happen. Um, yeah, so that's a good example. And I hope that makes you guys feel good. So when you start working with your chart um, and you do remedial measures, it's, it can be a really, it can really feel like magic. Um, there, that's what like Tantra and all these weird rituals and, and, and things are, are based on. And a lot of what we do in yogic philosophy is kind of based on sort of a, a lot of these occult reasons that are, that are, have their, their origin in the planets, just so you guys know. So I hope this gives you guys more of an example of how we can use remedial measures and customize them to the person's chart.